And of course, the devastation in the Caribbean is affecting people who live there, along with many vacationers who hoped for a tropical paradise and instead came to face to face with barrel. Yeah, usually you can bet on the Caribbean this time of year, and a lot of folks caught off guard by just how quickly it unfolded. It intensified very quickly, and many people had to think fast to stay safe. One couple rode out the storm on their sailboat in Grenada. Can you imagine? Terrifying to imagine, mm -hmm. but Cole and Emily Cruz, they lived it, and they join us now to share their experience. Barrel surprised a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us this morning. So how, uh, I, I mean, Emily, let's start with you. How were you guys tracking this as it was getting a little closer to where you were? Yeah, we are watching this very closely. You know, insurance requires us to be in Grenada by July 1, and that is, that's what we were doing. We were in the Tobago Keys when we saw this uh, forming um, much south from us, and we immediately the next morning said, hey, we got to get to Grenada and get to our spot. And our initial spot was Prickly Bay in the mooring field. And as the storm got closer and we kept uh, just really aggressively watching the track, we said, hey, we don't feel comfortable uh, with this. And uh, we actually went through Hurricane Ian two years ago, right after we bought our boat and um, learned from others about going to the mangroves and just tying up to the mangroves. So that's exactly what we did. We found the best hurricane hole in Grenada. We tucked in here. Um, what you see behind me here, we have three stern lines two anchors out and uh, that proved proved really well for us and everyone else in this bay too. So I definitely think it was the right decision. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Cole and Emily, real quickly too. When I, so were you, was this a vacation? Was this like a trip you had been planning for a long time or was this something, you mentioned insurance, was this a, a work-related trip? No, actually, so we are full-time cruisers uh, and we actually oh. document our travels um, on YouTube uh, every week. Um, so we have been uh, actually on our boat for this November will be two years. We've done 9,000 miles wow. uh, at sea. And um, unfortunately now coming into our third hurricane season, we've now uh, had two uh, major storms. Uh, and we mentioned uh, Hurricane Ian that hit Fort Myers. We were just 60 miles north of it when it turned at the last minute. Um, and we were bracing for a, a major impact at that point in time. Thankfully, we, we didn't have that. Uh, we have now done all of the Caribbean. Uh, we come to Grenada, which is supposed to be outside of the hurricane belt, right. uh, only mm -hmm. to miss this hurricane by, you know, like 30, 30 nautical miles at best. My um, word. I mean, you had, you had, and we're looking at that video, you had the rain bands that were moving in. Even in Grenada, and Emily and Cole, I know you guys know this, we had arguably hurricane force winds at the airport in, yeah. in Grenada, a 121 mile per hour wind gust. Now that might be an elevated station that, that was there. You said insurance requires you to get there by July 1st. It, that's because of hurricanes, right? I'm sure that after weathering Ian, based on that experience, your hope Emily was that we would not have to deal with this again, but this was uncomfortably close. Yeah, it was super close. You know, as Emily mentioned, we came into a hurricane hole and we are surrounded about 80% of us, um, or this hurricane hole or lagoon, if you will, is surrounded by large mountains. So uh, anywhere from 150 to 300, maybe even 400 feet of elevation around us. Uh, so we were really, really protected from the winds. And even then, like you mentioned, uh, we were definitely, you know, there was about 45 minutes there where it really intensified and, and we were really, really nervous. Yeah. Real quickly too, before we have to leave you, have you been able to survey some of the impacts around Grenada at this point and, and speak to locals? Um, you know, communication, obviously a difficult thing post hurricane, especially one of category four status. Um, so it's been tough, I think, to get a clear perspective on some of the damage and some of the impacts that they sustained. We've been talking to other cruisers who are around and just trying to really learn, but um, unfortunately our knowledge right now is kind of limited to what we see on the water. Uh, we don't have a car, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. because we live on a boat, so it's not like we can just go drive around. And we just got here, so we don't have any contacts on the ground. Uh, we literally just got here for the start of this. Um, so it's just going to be time uh, to get out and see. Uh, we certainly know north of us in Kariaku is absolutely devastated. We've seen the drone footage floating around there and just absolutely heartbreaking what they've gone through there. But I think at least as far as where we are in Grenada, uh, what we can see from the water, the mm -hmm. houses, um, the roadways, it looks like everything is, is pretty well okay, at least in this immediate area.
Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good to hear. I mean, a very close call and one that you were probably not expecting uh, as you were just sailing. Emily and Cole Cruz, thank you so much for joining us. The Adventure Cruise. Nice play on <laughs> play on words there with uh, with the last name. Thanks again, and glad you guys are safe.